Hello, everybody, and welcome to a conversation with artist Will Van Dyke, who is exhibiting in the seventh annual Evanston Made Group Show. Hello, Will. Hi, Lisa. Thank you Good for giving you. us the opportunity to meet you um, in person. <laughs> Virtual person. Virtual person. So tell us what it is you're exhibiting in the show this year. Okay. Um, I, I do a lot of work that's basically uh, based on the Midwest and I, um, I, have an, I, I used to be an architect and I have an affinity for buildings and one of the buildings that I have fallen in love with in the Midwest are corn cribs and not everybody knows what a corn crib is but a corn crib is what they use instead of a, a you see these metal silos, but these are old buildings that they have slats in them. They used to, they have a cupola up on top and they used to um, have a conveyor belt and they would load corn in and that's what they would store corn in in the winter. And they're predominantly located in Illinois, um, Indiana and Iowa. I've seen some in Nebraska. They're not in Wisconsin because in Wisconsin it's all cows. And um, uh, and so I have an affinity for them. So probably maybe three or four years ago, I started trying to make them in clay and I made them at the Evanston Art Center. And the, sh the one piece that I have in the show is one of those corn cribs um, and it's fired in a, it, and I've been experimenting over time because they're all different. I have a whole bunch of them on my website, but um, the one in the show is is uh, fired in a soda kiln uh, at Little Street Studio in Chicago. And how and big is that house? Is it's it about tiny? seven? It's about. <laughs> He's gonna grab it. Oh, there it is. <gasps> this is this is one of them. I mean, I have I have a bunch of them, and I have you know I. Um, you can, you, I don't know if you can see it, but this yep. one, the top goes like this, but. Careful, don't drop one. That would be really bad. This one, the top goes the other way. Oh, those are beautiful. So, you know, and I, you know, um, nice. anyway, so the, and, and the thing about them is they're disappearing. I mean, you, if you, mm. I mean, we drive down to St. Louis a lot because my son lives there and we have watched one in particular, it, it's just gone now. So it's just, it's, I don't know, it's just my homage to them. I it's love my it. my homage to these, and, and they're, um, I think the word for them is vernacular structures. Vernacular means they're, they're um, everywhere they're a little different because mm -hmm. they were made by indigenous, you know, they, they were made by the farmers and in the, in the local areas, so they all look a little different. Wonderful. Um, tell us what you're working on right now. Are you able to be in a studio? Are you accessing I am, your- I am in the Evanston, uh, I'm at the Midwest Clay Guild in Evanston. I nice. just, a um, friend of mine, Jill Birschbach, I was complaining on uh, Graham that I, I didn't have a place to do clay because Will Street was closed. And she said, oh yeah, we, somebody just left. Maybe you can join. So. Great. I have done that. I have done that, and um, nice. I have been working on a new barn structure. And um, I don't have an example. I do have. Uh, I don't have an example of it here. I don't know. I don't. But um, <laughs> but uh, I have one being fired out in a wood kiln out in uh, Plano, Illinois, as we speak. It's cooling down, and I'd be interested to see how it comes out. Excellent. Um, tell us a little bit about what is different about your practice since shelter in. Do you find yourself working more, less? Where are you at? Um, I am probably working a little less, and I rely a lot on. Um, Little Street has a kiln that is a soda kiln mm -hmm. where you put baking soda in the kiln uh, some at some point during the firing. And that really, um, it really works well for my work. And so I don't have that option now. Um, and I'm having to learn, I never had to fire kilns before. I'm having to learn how to, I'm having to learn things that I never did before. And at Little Street, they have 
a bunch of glazes. I don't have access to them now, so I'm having to mix glazes. So I'm, um, but I'm really, um, I am working on some, I, I may, on different stru barn structures, I, nice. one in particular, and we'll see how it comes out. You're learning and you're working. I like it. That means you're productive and you're busy. Right. Let's talk a little bit about your journey, uh, about becoming an artist. You said you have a background as an architect. How long have you had um, an art practice? I started, uh, I actually learned how to do ceramics in the army in 1969. They have something on the army base called, uh, 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 what is it called? It, it's basically they have craft centers. And, and so I started taking, um, doing ceramics there, and then I learned how to do it. In Wait, hold on. Craft centers for fun and recreation or because? For recreation on an army wow. base. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I learned, I took a course at Richmond Museum in, with Tom, a man named Tom Kerrigan in 1969. And then I, we moved to Boston. I did it in Boston. And I didn't do it for a long time. And then I did watercolors for 10 years. And oh. surprise, surprise, I did corn cribs and barns and watercolors. <laughs> and, then, um, <laughs> and then probably six or seven years ago, or maybe more, maybe eight, I started, I came back to ceramics with a woman named Patty Kochever. Um, oh yeah, I love yeah. her work. Oh, oh yeah, she's very she's a great teacher. And so I, I did work with her for a long time. And probably what changed, not, well, what happened, I went to a wood fire conference in Wabansi well, College. It's a, it's, a, it's a junior, it's a junior college in uh, uh, Western suburbs here. And they have probably more, they have probably one of the best wood kilns situations in the country. And all people came from all over the country there. And I, I fired a lot of work there and really got in it. And then, um, Three years ago, I uh, I got in, I I went to Anderson Ranch for two summers in a program called an Advanced Mentoring Program uh, with twelve other people. Um, you had to apply, and we would we met out at Anderson Ranch in Colorado. It's in Aspen, Colorado. Um, we met out there for a week or two weeks at a time. And then would meet, and and it it we made work during the year. We would have Zoom conferences and oh. talk about our work. And then last year it culminated in a show there. Oh, that's wonderful! And now the group is continuing. The thirteen people are still continuing. We meet on Zoom, and we're we're going to be um, looking at options for uh, going to a an art center. Uh, maybe Anderson Ranch um, uh, to to do what we did for two weeks, and it, it's really been um, nurturing because we um, and, and we're all very different, do different kinds of work. But if you have technical quiz questions, you can talk to these people. There, um, and we our two mentors were a man named Chris Gustin and Randy Johnston, who are both. Um, um, really well-known famous potters so it was it's really been quite an experience wonderful and so that really has it really I had to we had to make work over the over a year and we would meet with our mentors and we'd meet with one of them for six months and another one for six months and show them our work and at the end I had four pieces in a show there and sold three of them and oh, that's um, so great yeah, and that and held so, you accountable and held you making throughout the year. It, I really, I, I don't do. I really do well with deadlines. Yeah, <laughs> if you give me a deadline, I'll get something done. You know. Yeah. And uh, and so it's really been. Um, it's really informed my work. Really informed, and it ha had me think about it. And and uh, and I just, I'm going to show you one. Going to go thing. get something. That's fine. <laughs> this happens all the time during these interviews where artists are like. Wait, hold on. I have to show you this thing. Uh, that's probably my favorite. This is, oh. I, this is, can you see this? Yep. This is a uh, uh, grain elevator. 
Yep, that's gorgeous. So I'm doing my Midwest and then a lighthouse. <laughs> oh, nice. And those are both ceramic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's awesome. That's kind of what I'm working on now for half, you know. And Beautiful. You can see the, just the that's texture of this is, you know, the, the flat, you know, the, this is in a soda kiln and it gets hit with the soda and. Oh, that's so fantastic. Will, thank you so much for your time today and for Absolutely. sharing all of your work with us and for being a part of Evanston Made Show. And I just, I really appreciate you and your time and I look forward to seeing you in person soon. We hope so. Okay. Thanks, Will.